Hello and welcome back to Yes to Healthy Life. Yes to Healthy Life is brought to you by Heduke Foundation, which is an NGO which creates awareness for various health issues. We apologize for coming on late today because we're having some technical issues, but we still bringing you this topic because um, I've really meant to discuss this topic. Um, we are once again privileged uh, to have here a very good health professional. She's been here before and um, who is going to educate us throughout this. Uh, viewers can log on to our Facebook page on Great Television. You can also watch us live on the Yee Cable app. Download it on your iPad, your phone, everywhere, right on channel 22. You will be watching us live. As I told you, uh, today our topic is on STD, which is sexually transmitted diseases. Um, some of us know this, but most of us don't know anything about this. That is why I have gone round to bring you um, an exclusive from a health professional to teach us and educate us on this special topic. Um, she's been here before, so I'm going to introduce her. She is uh, Madam Louisa Annan, a gospel musician as well, and then a health professional. Um, Madam, you're welcome, and thank you once again for coming back here to educate <laughs> us on this topic. <laughs> thank we you, really Madam Christie. Thank, thank you, you very Madame much. Christie. Um, we are here to discuss on the topic STD, mm -hmm. which is sexually transmitted disease. When we talk about STD, what is this STD? and what what are they okay um std just as the name you know um represent yeah. really is sexually transmitted disease it has it's quite self-explanatory mm -hmm. um so but it doesn't necessarily mean that it is only transmitted through sexual yeah, intercourse yeah, yeah. or sexual activity oh, okay. however it is the major means of one having to acquire the disease and there are different types of disease under it what happens is really um there are some organisms mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they love to live in the reproductive area, area. so for the females they reside more that's where they survive that that is their territory they, they they replicate and reproduce more around that area if you put them outside it they are survival sometimes they only take a few seconds to die of some oh, a few okay. minutes so um yeah so some live in the female vaginal fluid Wow. It has its own purpose, the, wow. the fluid, um, yeah. And the men, some also live mainly in the semen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when one is engaged in any form of sexual intercourse, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it may not just be the intercourse, intercourse that's yeah. the penetration, yeah. not really, um, but other forms of sexual activity, yeah, it can yeah. be, sorry, it can be through oral sex, yeah. It could be through anal sex, yeah. um, definitely through penetration yeah, as well, yeah, yeah. Um, or even the use of sex toys. Wow. That can also lead to sexually transmitted disease, disease especially having the um, activity with somebody that has already acquired wow. the disease. And it's normally caused by, um, some are caused by bacteria, oh, okay. some by viruses, mm -hmm. others by parasite and um, yeast. Wow. So there are different different types and um if I may go on to mention quite a yeah, few names yeah. under them, um there are about twenty STDs wow. which are available. Wow. Wow. Yeah, about yeah, twenty. Can you just maybe What's a few the common ones? Then, yeah, explain it to us. That's how right. We get them yeah. We have the um syphilis, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. gonorrhea. Wow. Even with the gonorrhea we've got the oral one. Ooh. Yes, there is the genital gonorrhea. There is the um, anal one, Ooh. and so applies to chlamydia. Yeah. So it may not just be with the genital area, yeah, but yeah. there is the anal one, especially those who are involved more in anal, anal sexual yeah, activity yeah. or oral one. Um, we have hepatitis B, hepatitis mm -hmm. C. Um, uh, there is pubic lice or mm -hmm. crap. Some people mm -hmm. call it crap. Um, in our country, Ghana, we call it a yeah yeah yeah. so yeah, we yeah, have yeah. some also that you know um affects the genital Ooh. areas yeah and they cause loads of itching 
Um, there are other one, the common one we know of is HIV. HIV, yeah. Or yeah. AIDS. We have um, chlamydia. Whoa. Um, trachonomyasis, Ooh. that's another one. Um, I'm trying to remember all of them on the top of my head. There are quite a few more, yeah, yeah. but these are the main common ones, ones and are sexually transmitted, transmitted diseases. diseases. So there is a huge yeah, yeah, variety of yeah. them, but um, yeah, I wouldn't go ahead of okay. here. So what, what are some of these causes of these STDs? Yeah, um, mainly the bacteria or the virus depending on the names that i mentioned mm -hmm. gonorrhea chlamydia hepatitis yeah. um because all the different individual ones they caused by their individual microbial organism yeah. so if it's a viral one bacteria one yeast one parasite or other and wh whichever part of the body they like to reside yeah. especially yeah. The, the the fluid so when one is engaged in sexual activity yeah, yeah. Um, definitely it can be mm. contracted so mm. you can imagine having like an oral sex with somebody that has like a, with a male who mm -hmm. has already contracted, contracted um, which one should I probably um, chlamydia or yeah. gonorrhea yeah, yeah. or syphilis you know there is a high chance that the other individual on the yeah. other side is gonna contract it especially when it's unprotected mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so if there's no use of condoms yeah. it puts you in in a much more riskier position, position yeah. um the fact that a condom is used does not guarantee 100 percent yeah. yeah um it would give you a very high level of protection though but it you know it shouldn't get people the the hopes high that yeah you're not gonna get a hundred percent but it's worth really really very important especially if you don't know the other the partner person, yeah. Yeah. probably could be a one night stand you yeah. know you go to a club or you go to a party um you know some people get intoxicated they get a bit drunk um you know they just want to have fun mm. at the end of the day yeah. in the night yeah. um you don't even know whom you're coming into contact with so it would it can put the other individual at a very high risk of having std especially you're not knowing the other person who is yeah, coming through yeah, the door yeah yeah wow so so what are this the symptoms of this um stds are they are they the same um there are general symptoms mm -hmm. but depending on the type of infection um would indicate the symptoms the person may be going through yeah however the symptoms can be a bit overlapping mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you get it so somebody may have gonorrhea mm -hmm. but the symptoms can be a bit similar there are much more in-depth symptoms yeah depending on the progression of the disease, disease how long the person has had it for mm -hmm. or how well it has the the, the bacteria has replicated yeah, and kind yeah. of consumed the entire body um so i mean the, the symptoms can vary like media for instance yeah. you know let me even give the general ones for some people they may have um, genital discharge yeah so females they may have this unexplained fluid you know discharge coming yeah. out sometimes it can be a bit blood stained yeah um, with male similarly you know fluid from the from the from the penis yeah that is unexplainable um, some people, when they visit the toilet mm -hmm, to pass mm -hmm, urine, mm -hmm. they find it very painful. Yeah. Because what's happening is the the organisms must have caused lots of damages, damages. Oh. but they do not just reside in there. Yeah, they cause yeah. damages. Damage. They eat away tissues, and so some people may find blood in the urine. Um, even with males, mm -hmm. pain when passing urine definitely. Even when having intercourse, like with females, yeah, they they, they may find it quite painful. painful. Oh. Um, the, the for other conditions like syphilis, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some people may even have like a sore mouth. Oh, wow! Yeah, a kind of sore that may not be painful. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine somebody with a sore mouth and that person having a sexually transmitted disease? You, you wouldn't even think about it. You see, um, for like the um, genital warts, that's another one. I'm not yeah. sure if I mentioned it. You know, like the warts that mm -hmm. have yeah, yeah, yeah. skin. 
some can occur around the genital area mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. another sexually transmitted disease mm -hmm. so um i didn't bring pictures to show you um i'm not sure if we can do it in the future or we, we can have a way of presenting it time, yes yeah. but the words can kind of invade and, the oh, genital area yeah. and it's and it's quite nasty to to, to see, see that how? there are ways of treating that yeah. if it's yeah. to do with that the the crap or the the lies a jay yeah, around yeah. there um you can imagine a J in the head know, yeah, down. There. <laughs> <laughs> so th there are so so many um symptoms i mean some can just be like normal cold and flu symptoms yeah, yeah. you would be amazed wow just headache a bit of temperature um a bit of weakness you can yeah, you would be yeah. surprised that that could the, be uh, yeah, certain symptoms, symptoms yeah. of sexually transmitted disease so there is a whole range of it yeah. people who engage in anal sex um they may find lumps mm -hmm. certain types of growth or blisters yeah the blisters can be around the genital area you know i mean looking this up i, I was quite amazed what i saw people mm -hmm. some people are out there really suffering, suffering. you okay. know like chicken pus kind of blisters yeah, yeah so some people have it maybe in much more smaller but invading the whole genital area sometimes in the in, in, inner part with females and with the with the males you can have all these growth and kind of pimples looking like wow. um lumps and all sorts of rashes redness inflammation sometimes it Around there, um, the testicles could be a bit tender, so it's, it's a whole range, yeah. you know. But um, even with herpes, sometimes symptoms can come up on the face. Yeah, can you imagine rashes on the face? Yeah, yeah. and one may ignore it because mm. the last thing you like to think about is, Oh, I've got these rashes on my face, I've got this um, viral, I mean, whatever thing on my face. You wouldn't think about having to go and get it tested, isn't yeah. it? Because yeah. you wouldn't link it to it totally yeah. so there are many many people out there Suffering. who have got sexually transmitted diseases but they, but they have no they idea know. they wow. haven't been tested and they're all floating about wow um viewers out there if you've just logged on we are discussing about sexually transmitted disease and we are privileged to have here madame louisa Annan um to educate us on the different types of stds and um she just said that we need to get tested because she just mentioned some symptoms that you will never even know you have yeah. them just maybe common cold fever that's or anything. right you 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 might have the std that's right you never know um Thank you all for logging on. Um, there's a question here from someone. It says, mm -hmm. I heard about chlamydia about seven years ago, but want to find out, does it affect men as well, as well, or just women? How does that come about? It affects both. Both. Oh, okay. Definitely. It affects both. Um, but the symptoms uh, tend to show up a bit more in women than in men. Men. Oh, okay. But it does affect both, especially for people uh, much more younger people maybe between the age of 15 24 yeah. or just a bit above i call them chicken and chips you know <laughs> they're, very, <laughs> they're very you know at that stage they tend to explore a bit more oh, yeah. Um, yeah. about their world their, the world that they live in and some may have more than one Partners. Partners. Oh, so um partners. yeah it does put especially the young people and it, you'll be amazed that it is the commonest sexually transmitted disease yes, here yes. in the uk among the youth oh wow it is the commonest the chlamydia yeah so wow. even in the pharmacy every now and then i see these chicken and chips <laughs> <laughs> coming in every now and then to buy some testing kits and oh, wow. um, yeah yeah and the symptoms that i did mention especially with the discharge yeah it's one of the common um symptoms with it painful when it can mm. be very painful when passing urine um yeah and one thing is if it's left untreated it becomes a big issue so yeah. if you if you find any sort of symptoms around the genital area then please take it seriously definitely get tested, tested. if you are very sexually active you know like a butterfly keep jumping yeah, from yeah, one yeah in there one and there one then one you one can one. imagine what you must have contracted along the way because you can even get mo more than one std a at one you. time oh yeah and you have like two or three it puts you in a much more dangerous 
um, wow. position. So, wow. yeah. Oh, okay. I'm um, talking about um, getting tested. How often do we have to test it? Or because to me, I don't think we have to wait to see the symptoms. No. Before getting tested. So how often and how do we get tested? Okay. With um, having to get tested, if you have met somebody new, mm -hmm. this is my advice. If you've met somebody new, especially somebody you don't know, yeah. like a one night stand, you know, you finish a party and you just want to have a bit of fun. fun. Or even if you've been raped. You know, as far as you've come into contact, contact sexually know. with somebody um, that you don't know, it's not even somebody you know or you don't know. Yeah. Or if you have more than one sexual partners, I would advise that definitely take it seriously, get, get tested. tested. There is no harm. In the UK, we have free services all around yeah. us. You yeah. know, Ghana and other places definitely yeah. cost. Even here, it does. It has. We have private ones that cost, yeah. but. In the UK, we have sexual health clinics. Yeah. Um, more than one in every borough. Yeah. Yeah. You go to the North London, there are quite yeah. a few. You go to South London, there are quite a few. Because the government is, he to, pays more yeah. attention to these kind of conditions. Because whatever happens to the individual, they're still going to end up in the hospital. hospital He's going to pay yeah. for all the hospital beds and all the admission and whatever fees. So oh. there, are, there, there is a lot of help there. There are different ways that one can get um, tested. Mm -hmm one can test from home mm -hmm. so you know if one visits the sexual health cl um, clinic we have like testing kits, kits yeah. yeah it's free and you can grab it you know you have you have to do go through all their processes and that very simple they try to make it very very confidential simple, yeah. because it's a very sensitive yeah, area so and people, people well don't like to turn up you know, especially <laughs> when they see that person sitting and that person everybody there is suspicious and they are a bit um anxious that i hope this person is not gonna tell my wife no person you know um, yeah. but at the end of the day you're just trying to um get tested and get treated so th one of the ways is definitely going to a sexual health clinic mm. um yeah they, they, they can definitely get you tested um you can get the you can test from home there are telephone numbers available on the internet you go to the nhs website you know um, telephone numbers all over or you call the sexual health clinic they can post you some um they just post you don't you don't have to travel all the all way the to way the way site there, yeah. you do everything from home everything you know it's just so convenient so then they post the whole testing pack the kit, yeah. yeah the kits to you you test it from home there are some that depending on the type of infection you have yeah will determine what sort of testing we're gonna do yeah so there's some that you have to do the pin prick yeah that's yeah. to do with the yeah. blood one like hiv yeah. they yeah. would need that um some that they do the swap chlamydia yeah. like this you know the females the, the, so the kids will have everything it will have the instructions um it will have diagrams to show you how to do it yeah. all the details of what to do because you are testing it yourself yeah. at home um and then how to post it up so if it's a swab um if it's to do with the pricking stuff you do it you post it and you can also get it tested through your normal gp mm -hmm. and that is also a free service if you don't want any to be involved in any of with these people yeah. then um you can go through a private Hospital, clinic yeah. normally it's about maybe 27 pounds 29 pounds mm -hmm. to get the whole testing kits and um you can test from home nobody knows about it all you did was to order your testing kits online hide yourself in the bathroom do your test when the test um the pack comes in mm -hmm. and then um, post it off and then they will send you the result it yeah. takes some people it takes about just a day or two yeah when they receive it in the lab they do all their tests Test and then um, they'll send you the result through text or wow. they have their means of wow. so it's just to make it much more convenient mm -hmm. um for the public and one thing i like about the sexual health clinics is that they're very confidential mm -hmm. They, they wouldn't even inform your gp yeah if you don't want your gp, GP to, know. to know yeah. yeah and the other thing is if you want your other partner to probably get tested mm -hmm. because of you know what your results yeah, may be yeah. they can do the work for you they have a oh. very confidential and professional way of not mentioning names yeah, but yeah, very yeah. nice way of having to get the other partner to come in and, and get it. tested wow. so there is a lot of help 
out there, especially here in the UK, but I think in Ghana and other places, Africa, mm. you know, other European places, so that people watching us all around the world. Yeah. Um, I believe there are other options. Yeah. Available. Yeah. There should be. Yes. There should yes. be. Um, there's, um, I want to ask, can someone get STDs from sitting on the toilet? Because I know um, all we were talking about is through sexual intercourse. That's right. Um, now the toilet and then also from maybe wounds and stuff. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um. It's very rare. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those kind of myths that people shouldn't be too too anxious about. about. You know, you see people going put on the toilets, um, papers and <laughs> on the seats. <laughs> it, it does happen, but it's very very rare. One can only contract it if maybe there is a wound or an open um open wound on the on the buttocks mm -hmm. or um yeah when the skin is open yeah. and one thing is most of the organisms because they like to reside in the vagina area and in the fluid when they come outside maybe if somebody who's got um probably chlamydia or something and then you know visited the loo yeah um the the organisms they can't live there for long uh -huh, uh -huh. outside the yeah, body yeah. some die within like 10 seconds oh okay so it's very unlikely yeah. that you can get, get it, it unless you've got a cut or an open wound, wound. Oh, but okay. even that you know it's still quite rare wow. yeah but wow. it can happen wow um let me acknowledge some people watching us on facebook um if you are a jwa boache is also watching and uh, maxwell nana asian said good evening and great show uh patty chini is also watching uh, abna mabna says hello uh, ama eva is also watching and then dr pearl lane a banks is also watching we have nana k rocky also watching that's my husband oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a question here again he says um Okay, let me let me still read it. Um, does blisters around the mouth and mouth sores depict signs of STD? Please clarify to us. Not always, mm -hmm. but it could be. It could be, yeah. Just as I gave an example with syphilis. Yeah. So somebody who's got syphilis does not know. Yeah. Working about happily, going about the normal daily jobs and life and but the disease has a way of progressing, progressing yeah. and one of the ways is definitely having sore around the mouth or people that engage in anal sex yeah there could be sores open yeah. stuff around, around the anus or the genital you know there are three different yeah. places yeah. depending on the activity well, that yeah. one yeah. gets yeah. much so, more yeah. engaged in so i mean so happening on the mouth it could be due to anything really mm -hmm. and it's one of those kind of symptoms that i personally can ignore it mm -hmm. like oh let me get some zovirax and pop mm -hmm. it on <laughs> you think maybe it's a fever as we've been saying yeah before, like, let me get some cymex or some lip soap fever. pop it on keep scratching do my own thing pop on some salts traditional or something you know but you you may be surprised that the the, the infection is there yeah but like the person doesn't know you know so if especially if it's occurring on or on and off, off yeah. syphilis like this some people can get rashes in the palm oh wow i wouldn't pay attention to it you see or even rashes unexplainable and the rashes may not be itchy itchy yeah under the under the um on the on the sole of the feet oh it's a very weird symptom but you would be amazed that the person is got syphilis wow. and so for lots of people out there they have no idea that they've got std and they happily walking about mm -hmm. but what will also happen is because most of the diseases syphilis and chlamydia blah 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 gonorrhea hiv the person may not we call it asymptomatic the person yeah. may not symptoms may not even come up to for the person to be prompted that yeah, yeah. let me get myself checked up you see so you may get this normal cold and flu symptoms and um you know just go get some bchms or some uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> day and nightness pop it down my throat but you'll be amazed that there is an infection yes there is an underlining um infection so i mean the symptoms can vary but people most lot of people don't even show symptoms okay. so they don't even no. know wow. whether they've got it wow. or not wow yes wow 
well viewers um i hope we've learned a lot so far we will take a short break from our sponsors and when we come back we'll continue from where we stop so don't touch that dial we'll be right back Ivory Party Hire and Event Planning is one of the UK's leading event companies. There are several event planning companies, but the best of the rest is Ivory Party Hire. Our specialty is creating quality unique events with stunning delivery and integrating each and every element from decoration, party equipment hires, event planning, etc. We provide a wide range of bespoke events, from private parties and weddings to conferences, part of launching, charity balls and high-profile special functions. Our team works all over the UK and internationally. Our creativity, passion and customer service is second to none. Contact Ivory Party Hire and Event on mobile. 0740007100 one seven email info at ivorypartyhire.co.uk website www.ivorypartyhire.co.uk ivory party hire and event planning imaginary made real welcome back as i told you if you've just logged on we are discussing the topic std that is sexually transmitted diseases um we've learned a lot so far we've we've um educated ourselves on different types of stds right. the causes the symptoms and some treatments yeah but we are going to go on again um we have some people log on as well Honorable Temi Long says, beautiful ladies, thank you very much. Uh, we have Kwame Pinto also watching. Um, Sikaba is also watching. And then Kwame Pinto says, hello. Um, we talked about the treatment. Um, apart from going in for testing, are there any medications yeah. given to people with these STDs? Not with the HIV, yeah. but this the common ones, ones yes. around us. Are there any medications and if there are are there side effects as well mm. with these medications here yeah. yes um there are medications we don't have a whole lot really mm -hmm. um because most of them are bacteria yeah and some too are viruses yeah so if it's due to when after the person is being tested um whether through urine sample or the swaps and even as i mentioned so i think i missed it and now swaps can be done as well oh. oral swaps can be done vaginal swaps can be done and okay. some to urine um sample. sample they tend to avoid the urine sample a bit as much as they can especially with women because oh, okay. sometimes the results may not be that 100 percent oh, trustworthy okay. but the swaps yes definitely um so definitely th there are treatment when the doctor arrives at what's what type of condition it is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then um the person can be treated likewise so we have antibiotics mm -hmm. if it's caused by a bacteria yeah, yeah. um the most common ones use we've got um doctor cycling mm -hmm. or azithromycin like they give you we call it shots yeah a huge amount at a time wow <laughs> yeah that's thousand milligrams or Ooh. yeah one gram we take it as a single dose and that's all you need oh okay it's not like one two days like that with azithromycin bam we need to clear it all, is it with uh, all the stds or is it just one particular one just with person like the um chlamydia, chlamydia like this yes that that is just you know that di directly with that um the other one um antiviral one mm -hmm. we have like acyclovir is the most commonest ones okay. especially with herpes which is caused by a virus wow. um so the test will indicate what sort of treatment but the treatment there aren't that many, many okay. bacteria as i said mentioned two mainly two common ones yeah. doxycycline or azithromycin and wow. then with the antiviral the most commonest one is the acyclovir mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there are other options available though but you know when the doctor is writing the prescription yeah. they they think about the budget yeah. and um yeah the, the side effects Having to take um, a high dose of antibiotics at a time, it can cause a lot of stomach mm -hmm. disturbance. Yeah. It's just one of those 
oh. stuff. Yeah, that, that's a common thing with, with antibiotics. A lot of people don't even experience any side effects, really, apart oh. from stomach issues, oh, okay. really. Yeah, it's not that trouble. Antibiotics are not... They are not troublesome. Troublesome, yeah. Yeah, compared to like um, antipsychotics or other medications which can give quite nasty side effects. Wow. But antibiotics is mainly stomach, there's yeah. a bit of diarrhea, you know, people feel a bit nauseous. But every individual is different. The way your body will handle yeah, azithromycin or doxycycline, it can be very different from how my body goes about it so i may take the dogs exactly and i can have quite bad diarrhea but you wouldn't be going through that but the commonest side effect is mainly stomach disturbance diarrhea or sometimes nausea yeah. hardly vomiting you know some people go through just a bit of weakness okay. um it's a long list because the manufacturers what they do is they have to legally list all the side effects, effects yeah. you know that they came across when they were studying the medication yeah, yeah, yeah. um so but that the list does not indicate that every individual is going to go, go through, through that, that yeah you know, a lot of people don't even yeah. experience anything yeah. at all so um yeah i don't want to alarm anybody out there that's why yeah, i don't want to mention I so know, many I things know. but <laughs> just take it as stomach disturbance it's a bit of irritation and okay. it should be fine okay yes. um you know with this stds um with this common ones mm -hmm. um not the hiv if we when it happens undetected mm -hmm. and it gets to a certain stage can it kill like like the way um we talk a lot about a, uh, a hiv we talk about yes AIDS, yes um you have the HIV that. and then uh, when it goes untreated it we, goes on know that yes yeah what about this or similar ones? ones does it grow and get to that HIV stage? Um, getting to the fatal stage is like a last, last, last resort. You know, just as I mentioned, mm -hmm. no people can live even for the rest of their lives. Without detecting it? Not detected, you know, without even going through symptoms mm -hmm. like hepatitis B and C. Yeah. The person will be living a normal life. Wow. Without, a, nothing would even prompt that, let me go and have a checkup. You know, everything seems fine, but the person has got hepatitis, yeah, yeah. STD. Ooh. So I mean, each each one and and um, the symptoms and also f the way some people go through each condition can be different. So somebody can have hepatitis C, living the rest of his or her life without oh, any issues yeah. or symptoms, but another person the condition can really Ruined progress them, yeah. and it can lead to nausea and vomiting and weight loss and all sorts if the condition is left untreated mm -hmm. example like syphilis is so dangerous you know it starts off with the lower ground then it starts escalating wow. for some people yes so the beginning you may not you may be going through all these um uh, genital issues and the discharge and a bit of ad abdominal pain and um, then the soreness comes in but over time it can even spread to the brain wow yeah wow. with the syphilis yes wow. that, that is you see the, the extent as yes. to which so among all the STDs is that the dangerous one like with the syphilis it is dangerous wow it can be quite life-threatening so you know if anybody's going through any of form symptoms, of symptoms yeah. that you know happen please get yourself checked even if you're not going through anything in the uk there's no harm in just walking into a sexual health clinic and getting yourself checked up um the other one like chlamydia yeah if left untreated mm -hmm. It can lead to from one thing to another okay. because it's to do with you know especially with female yeah with the female reproductive area yeah. because it is in the vagina it has a way of causing the damages and then climbing up and causing wow. issues so some people may have ectopic um pregnancy so instead yeah. of the fertilized egg having to reside in the womb you see it being stuck in the fallopian wow. tube yeah some people may go through miscarriage Mm. or um early childbirth um some people can go through very painful abdominal pain. you know yeah abdominal yeah. pain i'll term it that way or even um pelvic inflammatory disease they can acquire it oh. some people can even have arthritis wow yes you know as a long term so 
it, it shouldn't really um, be ignored. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It has to be taken very, very seriously. Even with males, it can lead to infertility. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the condition is living in the semen. Yeah. And it's working its way, s just damaging stuff. Wow. And by the time you realize, the person is infertile. Because the condition is there, the STD is there, but because there hasn't been much symptoms or yeah, the person has ignored yeah. it or taken it lightly, it's just leading from one thing to yeah, the right. other. So it can be quite dangerous, really. That's why for the young people, um, they take it much more seriously. Mm -hmm. Immediately, they, 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 they suspect Assume something, yeah. especially if they move from one guy to the other. Oh Maybe one young girl is going like, four boyfriends, one in that school, one in that school, you know. Um, so they get it much more, they, they take it very seriously. They come, they get the testing kits, they get tested. If you go to the sexual health clinic, I, I visited visited them when I was doing um, my my training yeah. years back. Um, I went to the St. Anne's. St. Anne's is great sexual, we call it GAM. Yeah, that's a commonest name that other people, yeah, yeah GAM. And it's amazing, you know, there are lots of people there. Wow. Yeah, and you see all these different urine samples. It's like milk added to water. Very <laughs> cloudy, all sorts of colors. Wow. And um, yeah, people go through all sorts. So never leave it untreated. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you have been diagnosed. Because most of them, just common antibiotics. It's clear. It's gone. Yeah. Chlamydia is gone. Yeah. Wow. You know, gonorrhea is gone. Syphilis, pam, cleared up. You know, there are other ones like HIV or other naughty ones that may not be cured 100% because mm -hmm. they are very, they, they yeah, cannot be cured. Yeah. But at least, as far as it's been picked up through a test, mm -hmm. urine test, mm -hmm. swab, whatever, um, the doctor can give certain medications to especially with the virus down, ones yeah. they are very naughty in terms of treating them bacteria they know that troublesome wow. virus they cause issues so the doctor can give anti um viral medications that can reduce yeah. the spreading yeah. of the virus wow so wow. yeah um someone is asking a question it says what is the most common std among teenagers chlamydia 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 wow definitely chlamydia um and in the uk it is the commonest you know it's, wow. it's more common in young people i mean i, I don't have a child who's grown up to that age but mm -hmm. talking from the pharmacy experience mm -hmm. especially when i used to work for boots but it's amazing you know after school you see them in their school uniforms oh with all their hairdos and they come and they, most of the time they are accompanied by their friends wow <laughs> you see two girls walking in they'll come and they ask or maybe one coming with a the boyfriend they'll come and ask you have the chlamydia testing kit you know um yeah they do they do test a lot wow. if you go to the sexual health clinic you see the young people a lot of them because they are more sexually active, active. active. and um you know some have more than one partner so because uh, even if it's just one partner you don't know, know what that person has got. I know, I know. It it seems now the teenagers are even they know they even know more. They know more. They know more than us. So I know. And, you know, they see all this on TV and they just want to try, have a try. Yeah. And you can you know back home I mean I don't I, I'm not to disrespect anybody but we were brought up in a certain know, know. way that I know you, you wouldn't be I know. Yes. When you go out there you wouldn't get Midnight within within because I, <laughs> I, I quite remember my dad. Um, I wasn't 18, and um, a classmate visited my house. It's like, oh, all the boys leave this house, yeah, not until any of my children are 18. I don't want to see any of your me. parents will like, never allow it, especially when they see you at that age. They will give you a curfew time. I know. You know, if you go over it, the, 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 there lies a cane waiting for you. So we were trained up in that way that we couldn't do certain stuff. But UK is different. Yeah. yeah the person which yeah. is 16 years and yeah. the life they is know, in they their already know. Even now, 10 years old, they know something about sex. They do. That is a thing. So I was amazed, um, uh, um, Sister Chrissy. I visited one um, internet cafe. That was years back. And I needed to print something. My lab, my computer then wasn't working. 
I was amazed. Two young boys watching blue stuff. Wow. Next to me, and they were so happily doing. I was uh, even in time. Where were their parents? You see, so it happens here. Um, so one 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 young lady can have quite a few partners probably she doesn't live with the parents anymore she's got her own apartment so it's very common in young Over people here. yeah wow um one more question before we go he says um can a baby get std from a vaginal birth it can and happen how common yeah it can happen it's not i wouldn't say it's that common 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 mm -hmm. but it does happen okay. like with um with herpes you know if the baby is coming out sometimes um the baby can be affected by the mm -hmm. vaginal mm -hmm fluid um even with conditions like hepatitis c so if the mom or the yeah if the mom has got it or the family has got it in a way the child straight after birth gets okay. an in a treatment for that oh, as okay. a preventative okay. just to okay. so that the okay. child wouldn't have to live with this so most stds yeah mm -hmm. some can be um transferred onto the the, the child especially wow. with herpes through the vaginal fluid wow. it can happen Wow. Yes. Wow. Th this is amazing. Um, um, let me, there are some people watching us on Facebook. Um, hello, Hannah Abadonko. Um, Jack Lord Kofi Amankwa is also watching. And then I have William Vanderpoy also watching. Thank you very much for logging on. Um, Adelaide Broby. And then, uh, what did Jeremiah said? Bad children playing adult games. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, Nanefia Frema also watching. Rosemary Anoma. Amanda Tete and then um, Thomas Hilton Mills also watching. And then um, Agnes Buesiako said, I'm proud of you, sweetheart. God bless you. Um, thank you too very much. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, what advice can you give to the young ones out there? Not, not just the young ones, but to parents out there. How they will teach their children. Like, you know, most parents, I don't know. They work so much that they take off their mind yes. of their children. So the, yes. the kids learn something from somewhere yes. and do what. So I, w I would want you to advise the parents out there and then the teenagers out there as well. If you have any advice to give them. And then if you know you are infected, where you have to go to, where you have to get the information from, as well as um, um, what you have to do. Yes. if you know you've got this kind of symptoms that we just mentioned yes i would advise parents out there you know in uk is is uk is different yeah every parent is busy trying to work to keep up with i know the home staff a <laughs> lot of yeah, women are single right. parents and it, it can be quite hard you know um but parents should keep a close eye on their kids as yeah. much as yeah. possible yeah um I mean, my traditional way, sometimes bringing them up in the Lord, in the church. Yeah. I know it may be a bit sidetracked from what we're talking about, yeah. but in a way, it does help. Yeah, very, you see? very. Yeah, and um, so even parents can educate their kids on... On, on on sex having to abstain from it we were taught to abstain from it till we get we got married you I see know. because of the consequences not just to do with virginity but also having to contract sexually, sexually yeah. you know it's not just with hiv but other ones that may be left unknown yeah undiagnosed yeah. and then it leads to future complications yeah. you see so yeah that is one one advice with the young people mm -hmm. Don't just have unprotected sex with somebody you don't, don't know. know. yeah. Or just with anybody. It's not even just with an individual. Make sure you protect it with, with condom. Yeah. There's even this um, dental dam. We call it dental dam. It's like condom but for the mouth. Oh, okay. And some people use it. Um, yeah, it's also used for the, for the anus as well. Wow. So it's, you know, the fact that you're using a condom, at least it's going to give you a high level of protection, protection yeah. when you are involved mm -hmm. in any sexual activity. Mm -hmm. You know, people use all these sex toys, um, very poor hygiene, you know, keep exchanging things during sexual activi activity. And you see, there's no penetration though. Yeah. But because of those kind of activities, one can contract. It's just to do with the fluid, the vaginal fluid wow. or the semen. Yeah. And it can all be... Um, contracted nobody knows how far it can take yeah. the individual um, if for everybody out there especially if you live in the UK I think it's just worth having to 
get tested yeah. just to clear your mind yeah because you may not show any symptoms at all till the day you die mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah you may not even know that you've got std but you have it yeah and nobody can tell how far the disease can progress yes, yeah. until maybe you are on a on a dying bed and then they have to do these tests and the stuff test and, the and, and they realize that oh my god this is how bad it has gotten to because it was not picked up yeah uh, you know in the first place you can test it from home so there are telephone numbers and unfortunately i didn't bring any but yeah. they're all available if you go to the nhs website yeah um NHS Direct, it's also got the numbers there. Or just Google Sexual Health Clinic, especially yeah, the ones in your barrel. You know, up, yeah, yeah it, it, there are loads of options out there. Give a telephone call, they're going to post you the testing kit. Do it at home. Your mom doesn't have to know nobody else. If you, even if you don't want your partner to see, to you, know, you can yeah. hide it yourself. Yeah. Just to clear your head, you know. And um, yeah, get it done. Post it off. It's very convenient. You don't yeah. have to drive down or take the bus down to a sexual health clinic. Yeah. Um, you can do it through your GP. And because it's a very sensitive topic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It can such in, information cannot just be passed on passed easily on, yeah. between yeah. you know people. Even with the sexual health thing, they will never tell your GP unless yeah. you give you them give that them, yeah. option too. So, um, or even private doctors, mm -hmm. um, reputable private doctors. There, yeah. there are lots of them. I mean, trusted ones yeah. on the internet that you can just pay. It's less than thirty pounds. Mm -hmm. Trust me to get a testing kit that you can do it at home. If you don't want to be involved with your GP or any sexual or whatever, that, just do it through a private mm -hmm. route. Mm -hmm. Less than 30, 30 pounds. Get it done. Get it all checked. And then um, just clear your mind of it. And try to get protected. Anytime you want to be involved in any sexual activity, protect yourself. Mm -hmm. And try not to fly like a butterfly from you know having so many different... Um, sexual partners yeah. it really doesn't help because eventually if you move to one two three people eventually mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you would contract, you would contract one form it, yeah. of if it's not syphilis it's, it's gonna be gonorrhea if it's not gonorrhea it's gonna be hiv That's if it's not it's, gonna, it's just gonna be stuff and then it's, it's, it's um I, because i couldn't bring the pictures i thought at some point but unfortunately i couldn't i just mm -hmm. hope we, we can present the pictures at some point but it's very it's, it's very um, unpleasant mm -hmm, mm -hmm. having to see mm -hmm. how far some of these sexually transmitted diseases, the symptoms yeah. that can come out of them, even aside the infertility and stuff, having to have those stuff around mm -hmm. the genital area or the mouth or the anus is just not that pleasant yeah. enough. So, yeah, let's all take very good care of ourselves. Okay, the other thing I want yeah. to say is, you know, if you've been involved in any sexual activity um don't just run to the the sexual health clinic to get tested just the following just, day yeah. you have to give yourself just a Some bit of time, time yeah because and they would even ask you because of their protocols they, they would ask how long they got there because some um to show up in a test result yeah it, takes you, it would take a bit of time some take some take two weeks or that you know oh, HIV like this it shows up in about three months wow wow so you know if you run there uh, like immediately the next or next two days no no some and they would advise you accordingly that give yourself just a bit of time maybe come in two weeks time or come in three, three months, uh, yeah in in three months time or come da 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 to to get, get yourself tested. um tested and stay clean and get yourselves protected and mm -hmm. don't be um moving about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just get yourself wow, checked wow, okay wow, you can wow. get it for free so you've got nothing to lose wow you've got wow. options out there if, even if you have to pay not not just in the uk if oh that was from the internet because for your life for the sake of your life yes just go and get it tested yes so um that is the advice from our health professionals yes oh wow i wish we could we could we could listen and listen and listen and listen but time will not permit us we need to pave way for the next program um i would like to thank everyone all our viewers who are logged on um we are really grateful that you've been watching us all along and for your contribution and we'd like to thank madam louisa annan once again for coming here to educate You're us welcome. and she is going to come back again with pictures and then more to educate us on more topics 
um, on how to protect ourselves and how to stay healthy. And I would like to thank our sponsors, the Heduke Foundation, and then our producers as well, and everybody for watching us. Um, I would like to say thank you, and then uh, by next week, same time, we'll bring you yet another healthy topic on Yes to Healthy Life. And with Yes to Healthy Life, we say every life matters. Thank you and goodbye. Thanks for watching. I've made